Hello everyone, in this video we are going to talk about placenta previa. Now placenta previa is a part of antepartum hemorrhage as we have talked in, uh, in previous video. Now the very important definition and everybody knows it that the placenta located in the lower uterine segment means placenta previa. What is the incidence? It is common. It is one, ev one in every th uh, 300 pregnancy. For example, if you are treating 600 patients per month, you will get two placenta previa patients by yourself. So incidence will be 0.33 percentages. Okay. Now, the classification of placenta previa. Remember, every classification in the medicine the goal of doing the, the goal of classifying something means we need to learn it better we need to communicate that thing better with others for research purpose and everything so that's why we classify anything so this was the very old classification of placenta previa that's called brownish classification in which the grade one means minor placenta previa and that means that the lower age of uh, uterine segment is in lower uh, lower segment so see the, this is a stage one placenta is here but the lower age of placenta this age is into the LUS this my friend is LUS okay now grade 2 that is marginal placenta marginal placenta previa literally means lower edge reaching to the internal os the margin of internal os the third one is grade 3 means partial previa placenta partially covers the cervix grade 4 means complete placenta previa placenta completely covers the cervix this were the grade 4 grade super classification Type 1 and type 2 can be anterior or in posterior. So, the, in type 1, grade 1 placenta previa, it can be either anterior or either posterior. They are also called A plus B, A and B, A and B. So, if we see about type 2, then type 2 can be divided by anterior and posterior. So, type 2 A and type 2 B. Now, we have the recent classification. In recent classification, we tried to make this, present, this classification easy, lot more easier than previous one. It classifies as either it should be placenta previa or either it is low lying placenta. So, why we classify things again I am telling, we do classify for easy easy description and management for example if there is a low lying placenta so what that means that the placenta the lowest edge of placenta is more than 2 cm more than or equal to 2 cm of uh, sorry uh, within 2 cm of the os low lying placenta means the lower edge of placenta is this is internal if this is internal os is within 2 cm of the internal os within 2 cm so we can go for vaginal delivery in this case but if it is placenta previa that means the internal os is partially or completely covered in both cases we are going for cesarean section ok either it is partially covered or it is totally covered the management is not different so, this is why we do classify for anything in medicine. Now, as we have seen this, uh, this is internal os and within 2 cm the placental, reach, uh, placental edge is there. But it is not covering the internal os, just within 2 cm. So, it is called lower lying placenta. Now, the risk factors of 
placenta previa. Many risk factors and the most important risk factor is previous history. With the previous history and increasing amount of caesarean section, the incidence of placenta previa is ever growing. Previous history, one placenta previa is to five percent chances of placenta previa. With multiparity chance increases. Previous uterine surgery, either CS or myomectomy, increases the chance of placenta previa. Previous uterine cure attach also creates placenta previa. Multi-fetal pregnancy also uh, goes for placenta previa. Smoking also increases the placenta previa. Now I need to understand the very basic concept how placenta previa develops. See, uh, in earlier pregnancy, the uterus is just like a globular and it is increasing growth. For example, this one becomes this one, becomes this one. Oh my god, wait. Now this becomes this big. So, if the placenta initially attached in the lower uterine segment. But it grows when the uterus is growing, it is growing upper and upper, higher and higher with the uterus. Okay, so most of the placenta who, who, who are low lying in early pregnancy just goes upward, just goes in upper uterine segment when the pregnancy reaches the term. So this is the concept of placental migration should be in your mind. Now clinical features. As it we have uh, described it it's in the into the antepartum hemorrhage. That means that bleeding PV is going to be there. It is a painless recurrent causeless bleeding PV. It is painless bleeding. That means uterine contractions are not there. It's recurrent bleeding. Means the bleeding can stop one time and then occur after some time. It's not absolute that once the bleeding is there, it's going to be bleed. No, it can stop by itself and it can again happen. Causeless, no any specific event associated with bleeding. Just like the patient is sleeping in the night and when it, when she wakes up in the morning, finds herself in the pool of blood. No cause. What are the signs? Uterine size is compensatory to gestational age. Soft non-tender uterus. Head is floating because placenta is lower, uh, in lower uterine segment and it is not very easy to en get engaged into the pelvis. FSH heard norm normally. Fetal outcome is not very bad. These signs and symptoms we will discuss uh, when we differentiate it, the placenta previa and abruptio placenta. Now, let's come to the part. Whenever a patient comes with bleeding PV, in her late pregnancies. The very important thing you should know is that you should not do per vaginal examination. Because if you do per vaginal examination, you, I, you actually separating the placenta more. And that can result in a very, very uh, high bleed that can be very fatal to patient and even fetus. So just have uh, that habit that don't do per vaginal examination. You can do a per speculum examination so that you can confirm that the bleeding is coming from the internal or sorry external os of the cervix that's why you can see that it is an intrauterine bleeding and not from the local source diagnosis is confirmed by transvaginal ultrasound transvaginal ultrasound should not be very pushed inside the vagina it should be kept at a distance from the cervix now what about the management Goal of any pregnancy is what? We need healthy mother and we need healthy fetus at the end of the pregnancy. This is the goal of any pregnancy. 
and the placenta previa is not another thing in here also what we need is we need a good fetus we need a healthy mother also so we try that the fetus should reach to up to term up to 37 weeks the pregnancy should reach at 37 weeks and we should prevent fetus from prematurity meanwhile we are taking very minimal risk of mother okay so when the patient with placenta previa present with bleeding pv comes and you confirm the diagnosis that is the placenta previa you see the bleeding if it is a very very heavy bleeding and it is not controlled by medications bed rest you have no option than terminating the pregnancy with cesarean section in case of heavy bleeding but in most of the cases of placenta previa bleeding stops actually after some time so if the bleeding is controlled then you see the pregnancy weeks if it is more than 37 weeks we don't need to prolong this pregnancy anymore and we don't need any risk to this mother because more than 30 weeks fetus is not preterm now so what we do we terminate the pregnancy at 37 weeks with cesarean section now the question arises when the pregnancy is not reached 37 weeks then we can go for expectant management till 37 weeks and when again 37 weeks achieved we do cesarean section this expectant management is called mcfi regime mcfi regime okay now uh, what is this mcfi regime the goal is to carry the pregnancy till term with minimal risk of risk to the mother when we use this kind of management plan only when when there is a no active bleeding patient is hemodynamically stable gestational age less than 37 weeks ctg should be reactive that means the fetus should be very in good status no fetal anomaly has been diagnosed all these criteria are the criteria when we use mcfi regime now what we actually do in mcfi regime we hospitalize the patient till its delivery simple till 37 weeks we just hospitalize the patient we arrange blood investigate it investigate her and do a per pre anesthetic check up also we give steroids for lung maturation sometimes we can use short term tocolytics for if any contractions are happening with the nifedipine we we are 24 hours le prepare for any time emergency and cesarean section okay so at uh, and then the active management where we talk about if very very heavy bleeding is there then we should go for active management the cesarean section by senior doctor with blood prepared for pph and placental adhesion and hysterectomy because placenta previa is a very very risk factor of pph placenta accreta percreta so what we should take we should go for uh, we should take all the precautions for pph in case of placental adhesion we have to do his hysterectomy we, we should take consent about that again now according to the types in some types of placenta previa we can get a chance of trial of labor so in low lying placentas we can give trial of labor type a and type 2 a type 1 and type 2 b sorry type 1 type 2 a 
in both of this kind of placentas placenta previous we can go for a trial of labor but if the placenta previa is of either type 2b or 3 or 4 <coughs> we have no other chance other than going for cesarean section when the patient comes with bleeding pv initial treatment should be what iv fluid oxygen blood products should be ready investigate we should give ba complete bed rest we should give a sterile pad for checking bleeding pv regularly ctg should be done to monitoring uh, to monitor the fetus also and uh, tranexamic acid that is used for uh, preventable uh, bleeding pv and bleeding okay so this was all about placenta previa thank you